Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 152. John Ellis, Ford Software Evangelist. For those of you that didn't hear it, our CTO uh, said it best. We are a customer driven organization, and with yesterday's announcement, we are now a developer focused organization as well. So tell us about the announcement in more detail. Um, so in 2007, we introduced Sync, which is cutting edge technology to control your bring in devices. I'm a big fan, got it, my 2010 Mustang. In 2010, Mustang. we it. acknowledged intent to, uh, to wrap all those services, cool services, with API software to give third party developers access to that same sweet technology. And we finally, in 2011, launched it right here at this show, on this stage, Pandora, followed by Stitcher and iHeartRadio. Uh, we're taking the level up. Yesterday, we said, hey, we're no longer in a closed beta. We are an open program. And so Developer Ford Com went live yesterday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we're hitting thousands on a sustained basis every hour. Downloads, it's open. Guys, girls, come, bring your ideas, bring your code. We want to see it. So I'm an app developer on Android, iPhone, Blackberry, Windows Phone. Um, and I say, gee, this would be interesting to, well, there was just a, 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 an app over here. These guys do an app finding parking places. That's right. Ford builds in this great park assist into many of its vehicles. And they want to tie into it? How, so what is the process? They download an SDK? What so, do they do? So let's start from the beginning with what, what, what is the technology, and then that will okay, help great, you figure out great. where it's at. Um, so on the head unit, we have some very cool things, buttons, uh, knobs, dials, voice. We have all this sweet access. We've wrapped it with software called AppLink. Right. We've now made those APIs available to third-party developers. Right. They find it on iOS and Objective-C, so it's a library that they would take, bring it in Xcode, and away they go. Uh, if you're an Android developer, you know Java. It's done in J2ME for Dalvik. You take it out in an Eclipse project, bring it into your project, and, and away you go. Um, on previous releases, we were supporting BlackBerry. We're waiting for the BB10 announcement to figure out where we go with that. Um, Microsoft Win 8 coming soon, but not there yet. We're, we're following the trend with volume. Uh, so the goal was use a platform that you already know and love. So if you're an iOS developer, you right. are using iOS plain, clear, and simple. And if you're an Android guy, you're using Dalvik and your Eclipse. Um, Basically, what happens is your phone is paired with a head unit over Bluetooth, and we use the SPP, serial pro profile, to push the APIs back and forth. So you're, you're a developer, and you're on an app. You're, develop, you're communicating with the head unit in a safe and controlled fashion. And it looks to, and that's important, by the way, because one of the issues, of course, is you don't want to give rogue software on your phone control to the car's computer. Is the car computer, the computer that's doing the injection, the, the braking, all that, is that separate from the computer in the head end? Yeah, so um, all the safety critical functions, all the, we call them ECUs, are in a separate and controlled area. They're not accessible from where we give it's, you. It's there's a physical, off. actually not just, it's physically, physically hardware separated. They're not accessible. Um, and that's so, by the way, huge, because we're seeing already exploits from other vehicles and other companies uh, people getting into the locking system, for instance, and things right. like that. So you, you physically separate that That's stuff. That's correct. That's a functional architecture of the product from, from actually back in the day when we created Sync in 2007. Right. Right. And it's carried forward in my four touch, same architecture, it's firewalled off. Um, it's and kind of more expensive because you have to have separate hardware for the two units. Well, but again, I'm not an auto guy, so right. I'm not, I can't, can't speak but to the bill of material. I think it's important that you do this. Yeah. But safety is, yeah, is yeah. critical. Yeah. And that's kind of why it took, you know, we got a lot of push and pressure from folks. They're like, hey, Ellis, you're, you, you know what we want. You know what we're doing. Why is it taking so long? Right. Um, the two years was spent trying to make sure that we figured it out, make sure right. that we understood it, um, worked with key partners. And so we said, hey, try and Try and break this. Try and tell us what you've learned. We'll understand what's going on. Some of the key partners that we were launched with uh, on, on Monday, USA Today, Amazon, Cloud Player, uh, Wall Street Journal, Rhapsody, Kaliki, you know, solid developers. We're like, kimono's off. Tell us what we need to do. Help us work it out. And so what we released on Monday, they've used. So they've been doing it. Um, and again, we're getting great response from people. So we're excited. So I wrote this great app. I'm using your APIs. What's the next step to get this app to work with a, a Ford vehicle? 
So um, if you've got an app already and you're looking to extend it into the vehicle, so a couple different things. Um, you'll go get the SDK, and we have all the assets needed. So the actual software development kit itself. You have an emulator. Yeah. Sorry? You have an emulator in here. We actually do. So on the, so on the cool. sites here, we have, we have hardware. So it's actually it's the actual hardware you would find in a car. <laughs> we that. call it Sync in a Box. It's called our TDK. Uh, and those are also going to be made available through the program. Uh, software emulators are coming soon. Um, but you would basically... Um, you would take the SDK, you'll go, we help you with all these assets to teach you what are the APIs, and you figure out how you want to modify your experience to suit the car. So again, from Ford's standpoint, we're here to enable you. We recognize you have a customer base, and your customer base happens to be a Ford customer. Right. We're not trying to dictate that. We're trying to ensure that what you do is safe. But other than that, we want your customer relationship to just be extended into the vehicle. So to that end, we'll show you stuff. But now it's up to you to go figure out how you want that design to work. How do you want the flow to work? What do you want it to look and feel like? Uh, once you're at a point where you're like, I'm done and I'm cool and I'm ready to go, then you come back to us and say, I want to distribute. And that's kind of the automotive kick to a traditional developer program where it's like, OK, before you can distribute, you got to talk to us. Because we right. want to validate that you've actually followed sort of the rules of the program. You've understood the, the idea of distraction. You've understood the idea of what the program's trying to accomplish. And then we're going to stand there and partner with you on the standard distribution channels that you already own, iOS and Android. It's, it's the same app. Today, you can go Kaliki, Pandora. It's not Pandora Ford. It's Pandora. And it just works. Will you do some sort of branding or imaging or you know, certification, can I see that on the app? It says Ford certified. How is that going to work? So uh, a couple different things on, on that front. Uh, first off, when the, when, the, when the phone is actually in, a, an, in an app link mode, so the application is actually running in app link, uh, the screen has a lock. Right. It's an imagery lock. And it will have the logo of Ford and the logo of the company. It will say something like, and it's up to the developer to kind of figure that out. We've given guidelines. But it basically says screen lock while in app link, screen lock while in driving. Um, and what that means is that the application itself is not you cannot interact with the app but through AppLink. So now through your voice or through your vehicle controls. Your phone still works. You can get phone calls. You can do other things with the phone. Just that app cannot be done while you're in that mode. Um, with respect to then testing, um, there's a couple things we're doing. We've published the suite of tests that we're expecting you to be able to pass and demonstrate before you even come back to us. That's good. Um, and it, those tests follow suit with our sort of distraction guidelines, what we're trying to accomplish with the, the, the objective of the program, et cetera. And then when you come to us, we're going to subject it to a suite of tests that are not public. We're not going to tell you about them. Um, but they're tests that we're going to validate to understand cognition. We're going to talk, you know, we have a huge user base of just Ford employees that will now take a look at this, drive test, smoke test, things of that nature. At that point in time, we come back to you like, hey, you've, you've check, 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 check. We're good to go. Here's the distribution license, and the license has some requirements. One of them is when you submit to the store, we have to have you do some meta tags, Ford, App, Link, Sync. Um, and then those tags are now usable for us to help our customers discover right. App, Link enabled apps, whether it's through the store or other. Right. Um, what we're announcing as well is the idea of a catalog. So we're telling developers, we're going to help you. Uh, we're not sure yet how we're going to distribute that to our consumers, but we are consistently ready for a catalyst. We're building all the infrastructure in place to make you successful. I mean, Paul Mascarene has really put it you know, best. We, are, we understand the developer, we get the developer, um, and we're focused on your success as much as we're focused on our success. What, how, now, of course, some of the control, much of the control is going to be through the voice uh, 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 interpretation of sync using the nuance and so forth. Can I add commands as a developer? How does that work? Do you have to add the commands? No. So, so what we've done, um, we've actually wrapped the TTS, or text as a speech service. The actual engine has been wrapped with an API. And that API says, OK, give me your voice menus. And so there's two components to the architecture. The API is what you want your system, the car, to speak, or what you want menus on the screen to look like. You pass that in an API call to the head unit. Uh, the architecture of the head unit is such that we understand distraction, and we've implemented the distraction guidelines on our head unit. So right. you send us 200 menu items. We'll take them. We're only going to show you five because right. the car is in motion. Right. Um, so there's things like that we've, we've put in there. And we explain that to the developer. We explain sort of you know, what's in place, the benefit there. Um, from the voice standpoint, yeah, you, you tell us what you want the voice menus to look like, and voice menus are constructed. So when you go out here to any of these developer examples and you're out there saying, hey, uh, Amazon Cloud Player, play XYZ, that voice command was chosen and built by Amazon. 
not by us. That's great. So, so it's completely extensible. Absolutely. Your absolutely. vocabulary could go anywhere. The vocabulary, the flow, and that's what we're saying to the developers. So one of the things you know, we're proud of is it's really easy to use. I mean, some developers are turning stuff on like in 24 hours. And then what's happening, a uh, well, cool example is a partner of ours last year, NPR, fantastic application, wonderful partner. They were up in about 48 hours. And then when they saw the power of voice, they stepped back and said, we want to do something slightly different. And so they started from the beginning and redid the app because they knew now that they had voice. And some of the other partners are recognizing it. So yeah, there, some of the time is being spent like, I can do so cool stuff. Yeah. I'm going to take a step back and yeah. redo my experience to now take a fact of that I'm in the car. But again, it's, it's easy. You can be up. And if you want to extend it, go for it. If you want to just do it simply, go for it. But again, that's the idea. It's your customer. Your brand is our customer, our brand. But we're hoping that you're going to take advantage of the power of it. Well, think how powerful that is. That means now my, when I bring my phone into the car, the sky's the limit. I can have a variety, huge variety of apps. You've got the early partners, as you said, Pandora, Stitcher, who's brought us here today, uh, uh, Slacker. Um, those, those guys, what kind of experience have they had? It, they've, been, they've had it for a year now. How has it been for them? So, I mean, I don't, I don't want to put words in people's mouths. I want to be careful. But, I mean, the feedback from the guys when we talk to them, and I'm talking like the development team. So the Pandora development team, Stitcher, um, Slacker, iHeart, is generally, wow, it, it really is actually easy to use. Yeah. Um, it's, it's well thought out. Um, one of the key concepts that we were trying to communicate yesterday, through people like yourself, the, the press as a vocal voice for everyone is, we get the developer. Right. The guys on the floor here working are all developers. Every right. one of them here is doing something with respect to pushing the limits on what we're doing with AppLink. Um, and so we understand the development community. All of us have the SDK on our machines. All of us build on a regular basis. When we're at meetings, um, you can tell the guys who are part of the, the JTE, that's my initial, the JTE org, we're all, we're all hacking away constantly because you know, we, we're, we're, we want to make sure we understand it. We want to make sure that we're providing value because at the end of the day, we're, there's competition. You know, so the, the imitation that's happening right now in the marketplace is a huge validation for what Ford's doing. Right. The bring-in strategy, the mobile application access strategy. So we recognize it, we welcome it, and um, we're, you know, we're up in our game. And so from that standpoint, we're, we're excited. We're very, very excited, and we're wanting to make sure that we're constantly providing value. Because at the end of the day, a developer needs a vehicle at some point in time to put an app on. Right. We want to be that vehicle. That's how we sell more vehicles. That's great. Yeah. What kind of uh, access to the underlying vehicle platform do I have? Is it just for content, just for playing back music, or can I do something even more significant? So um, AppLink as a, as a product suite has an evolution of its own. So, so we're, on a, we're on a version of the API suite, and that version was focused on the sort of things that both Ford could be comfortable with and developers knew about, so, and, and stuff that our, our drivers knew about, so right. music, radio stations, whatnot. And so to that end, it was very infotainment, the, the services of the infotainment system that were available. Um, we have a roadmap, and again, developer.ford.com, we're, we're blogging, we're posting, we're telling people sort of, we're unveiling sort of little sneak peeks at what's coming up through 2013 and beyond. Um, vehicle data, access to more and un more underlying systems are on roadmaps and are planned, or and in some cases are actually on people's laptops today, you know, we're working it to validate it. Um, all of us are developers, and we know what developers want, and so right. we're very keen on making sure that we can get it to you in a safe and responsible manner. That's always the trick, but boy, you got, uh, I read 25 gigabytes an hour of data coming off the sensors on this fusion energy here. Everything from the backup camera, the radar and the bumpers. I mean, this thing is a platform that is feeding tons of information back to the system. And I can just imagine the kinds of apps you could have if you had access to some of that data. I understand there's, of course, a safety issue. And right. But uh, is, is that on the roadmap at some point? Yeah, so there's, there's two parts of, of sort of Ford's statement here at the show. You know, there's the production quality, we're there and we're making sure that we have quality apps right. and that we have a quality experience for our developers. Right. And then tomorrow, um, my colleagues are gonna also talk a little bit more in depth about OpenXC, which is a research effort to actually figure out what would or what could happen if you're a cool developer with some of the sweet data that would come pouring your way. Yeah. And then through developerford.com is where they marry. And so as you figure out stuff in a research environment, you start understanding what happens, we're going to pull that back and punnel it back in through to AppLink and say, okay, great, we now know what's out there. This is so cool. Let's go see if we can make that happen. There's a, there's a model for this in Silicon Valley that companies like Microsoft that create a platform, like Apple that create a platform, and then open the platform, uh, reap huge benefits. You have a, now you suddenly have a giant R&D department thinking about things you can do with a car. It just doesn't just come from Ford. 
Right. So I would imagine that's got to be a goal for you. Uh, yeah. So I mean, on, on both fronts, I mean, we're you know, so OpenXC is absolutely focused on those people who are, are cutting edge in research, big data. I mean, as you mentioned, gigabytes of data are flowing. Um, so what's meaningful? What's Even usable? Even if it's read only, that would be great. Well, so open right? it is read only at the moment, right. and in, envisioned to be read only for a long period of time right. until we could figure that out. But um, on that side, you know, it's like, what do you do with all that data? How do you get it? What are the limitations of either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? How do we right. actually get the vehicle data to you such that you can do something with it's it? Kind so, of a fire hose. So that's kind of cool, and yeah. that's that side. And then on the, on the product side, we're like, you, if you've got cool ideas where you're pushing the limits of, of right. your app and our vehicle, let's talk about that. I mean, we're looking for two things here. One, we've got some categories that we're immediately interested in. Navigation, health, things that are going to drive the vehicle safer. How do you help with fuel efficiency, my driving habit, I mean, all those kinds of things. Uh, and then we're also looking for you to tell us what are some of the things that you think should be in the vehicle, whether right. it's from an access standpoint or a hardware standpoint, that then we wrap again with this cool software. Right, right. Yeah. It's a very exciting uh, thing. What are some of the, I mean, it doesn't have to be stuff that's going to happen, but just some of the blue sky ideas that you're starting to hear from developers. I'm sure they're getting excited. Yeah, no, they are. I mean, we had, um, we've had a lot, of, uh, a lot of noise coming, not noise, but we've had a lot of interest coming back, and people on the floor are seeing the badge, or they're seeing us, and we're getting, hey, can I talk to you for two? Right. I got a great idea. Well, these parking guys. Well, I mean, the park yeah. guys, yeah. Like we could run it. And what's happening is, is, is three things. You know, in Dearborn, Ford is a very well-recognized brand. In the, in the world, it's a recognized brand, but it's a recognized brand from an auto standpoint. And so part of our story here is we're more than just the auto from the standpoint of hardware. We're a software company looking for cool things. And so we're trying to em embrace a whole new audience of, of innovation. You almost have to fight uh, preconceived notions about Ford, what, what Ford means. Well, it's not just a car company. Ford and the auto industry at large, right? I mean, Ford takes its obligation yeah. quite seriously, right? I mean, 110-year-old yeah. company um, that's been doing and driving innovation on a regular basis. And, we, and, and so, yeah, we, we, we understand our obligation, ready to stand up in the industry for it. But we're looking for huge innovation. And, and so some of, what are some of the cool ideas? Get back to your question. Um, if I have, you know, I'm, this device, that bring-in device, we recognize that 45 minutes of your day, roughly, in the U.S. is spent driving. It's a little bit more in some parts of the world, a little bit less in other parts. But it's only 45 minutes a day. Um, so maybe call it an hour. But you're with your phone 24-7. Right. Your phone is within three feet of you 24-7. And so it's a very personalized experience for you. So for us, it's like instead of trying to fight that, let's figure out how we can extend that experience into the vehicle. And so what are some of the cool things that happen? Well, people are using their phone, especially when NFC comes available, as a payment. So imagine an app that knows that you're buying gas on a regular basis, and it's in Appling, and it now is understanding your vehicle usage and driving behavior. Uh -huh. It can start making recommendations either on routing structures, it can make recommendations on driving patterns, it can do all this without Ford having to get involved. Ford makes things available, and by that definition, the customer gets excited, it's a cool opportunity, and people want to come to Ford. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm thinking GPS also. Now, of course, Ford has GPS, Sync has GPS, but I also have about 18 different map programs. I've got Waze, I've got... So is there a way to maybe integrate that in somehow? Absolutely. So part, again, the value of, of, of AppLink is it's API software that we wrap around a particular service. And so you can get GPS. Uh, that's some of the vehicle data that we're you know, going to be looking to, to push. But what we're cool about is your phone has GPS, but the car literally knows where it's at. Right. And so if we not, can, if we can just, marry... Not just a 2D, in no, no, 3D. In 3D. It knows exactly, and it, yeah. and if it loses GPS for any point of time, it can, through dead reckoning, right. know where it's at. Right. So through the combination of an onboard and an offboard marriage, we can give you exceptionally accurate information. Now the question is, as an app developer, what do you do with that? Right. What could you do with that? Right. So things like geofencing. I mean, right, so we're looking at, again, the, the, the sell for the executives at Ford was there's massive innovation happening at a such rapid pace on the mobile device. Let's not try and catch up. Let's make sure that we can tap into it yeah. and do it safely and extend that paradigm. Well, I think of pay with square. I could drive up. The car announces that it's there. I'm going to pick up my coffee and drive right off. Starbucks is a big deal with Square. Wouldn't you that be awesome? It, you could do it with Square. You could do it with the fact that you, well, you're accompanied with eBay and eBay's on the phone or PayPal's on the phone and it knows that the threshold's been triggered and an automatic debit. I mean, we want developers to think broadly about what these kinds of things yeah. are. Yeah. Take the app, come back to us with your ideas. So before, it was a struggle because you'd have to try and explain it to us. And that's really difficult when it's right. really a new idea. So the idea of the program is go, right. have fun, figure it out, work through it, Use us as need be. We have assets and resources available. Use us as need be. 
but then come back to us with your idea. Don't just talk about it, show it. Right. One of the mantras that I have on the guys on the team is code beats paper. Don't talk to me about it, show me. Right. And so let's go do that. And so that's the same concept that's with the developers neat. outside. It's like, you know what? We're done talking about it. Let's go, let's go do it. Do I have to pay you anything to get the SDK to, to look at the API? No, the program's completely free. Um, we are exploring opportunities for you know, unique and personalized access to some development resources, whether it's TDK or people. Right. Um, but right now, no, our goal is we're, we're not trying to charge you. We're not trying to make money on this. We're selling cars. Right. Ford Motor Company is a car company. And we recognize that our customers have phones that they have personalized and that they know and want in their vehicle. Ford knows it has an obligation to help make the, the drive safer. And so it's a perfect marriage. It makes me want to go download the API just to see what things I can do. How many, how many com API uh, commands are there? Are there a lot? Uh, so the API, uh, is is, in the latest version, we're uh, 25, 27, somewhere in, in there. It's speech, it's screen, it's, speech, it's menus. It's screen, dials. It's about knowing when the vehicle's in motion. So we'll have alerts come across so the vehicle can tell you when it's in motion. We can tell you when you're stopped so we know how to control your, your lock screen. Right. Um, we can get you speech controls. You have menu buildups. Yeah. That sounds so cool. It makes oh, no, me want to write something. You know, well, and that's the excitement. That's why we're sitting here. I mean, somebody, you know, Robert Scoble yesterday asked me, he goes, do you have the coolest job? I said, I, you know what? I do. This is so fun. Really great. Every day. It's just a, it's a great job. Well, you have a chance. You're speaking to developers. Tell them, what do you want? What are you looking for? What would uh, you, what's your dream application that you just want somebody to write right now? Wow, the dream application. You know what? I don't know that I have a dream application, but guys and girls, what I'm looking for is you guys to be unleashed and come to me with some, just think out of the box, some creativity. Yeah. And if you're interested in actually working with us, not just as a developer third party, but working with Ford, I got cars to give away. We get, I get a this, new car, this is it incentive. is so cool. We can be on a, no, 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 it is so wonderful. We go, we have a test track. I got a chance to ride in a Raptor, cutting edge vehicles, oh, the Shelby wow. GT500. I mean, oh. it is so cool working for a car company and it is a cool platform. And so if you are geeked by software, by software development, Ford knows it, Ford's got it, and we want to hire you not just work with you, we want to hire you. But yeah, we're looking for third-party apps as well. So cool stuff that, again, right now our priorities are safer driving experiences, better driving experiences. Uh, is it cheaper, safer, faster? So we've got the My Energy Lifestyle. I green. thought that was interesting. Well, I, well th that's that, one I'd like. I'd like to be able to talk to my sick and say, turn the nest up, I'm on my way home. Absolutely. Heat up my house. Well, there's that. There's also the fact of like applications that help me drive better, figure out routing, figure out opportunities yeah. for turning my power. And so one of the things that we're doing with my Ford Mobile is the ability to go from gas to electric back to gas. So if you're driving a route, the ability to actually modify the vehicle as you're moving. So there's software has become a huge focus at Ford Motor Company over the last few years. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. And we're excited. How exciting. People want to know more, they should go to? Developer.ford.com. We are open, we are live, and we are willing and ready. John Ellis, thank you so much for uh, telling us. You're, you're a great evangelist for this. <laughs> telling us all about the Ford and software. I oh, you're it. more than welcome. Thank you very yeah. much. Like I said, we're looking forward to what's going to come. All right. Thank great. you so much. Thank you, Leo. Take Appreciate care. it.